Hasty, Minnesota, near Clearwater. Good morning, everybody. Another day is underway. Here's our load. We picked this up in Burlington, Iowa yesterday, and it's going to Saskatchewan in Canada. Full day's drive from here. We'll get there tonight. It'll be about, about 10 hours to the border. And then another couple hour, hour or two, it'll probably be about a 12 hour day of driving today. So I'm getting myself all psyched up, all pumped up, ready to go. Let's get out there, let's burn some diesel fuel. day you know what we got to go in and fuel ourselves up I'm gonna stop for fuel along the way for my truck as well today not sure exactly where we're gonna get that done I've got to look that up before I leave go grab some fuel probably probably not too far from here but it depends what the fuel prices are in North Dakota I have a feeling they might be cheaper there might fuel up in Fargo if I can make it to Minot Probably a little more expensive in Minot than in Fargo though, so I'm guessing we'll probably be filling the tanks up in Fargo. Ah, we'll figure that out once I get some coffee inside me. It's gonna be a good day. It's a nice cool day. It's not too cold. Nice and cool. It'd be nice if we had some more sunshine, but we got daylight. I'll take it. Always put the cream in first so that you don't have to stir it later. That's a bit much. Oh, that's good. Okay, we want 100% Colombian. On a lot of these machines, even if you say fill cup, it'll still leave you space for cream. Every once in a while you get one, though, that doesn't. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. They have the best priced coffee, and it's the same coffee you'd find at like Flying J or Love's. This is the Speedway Travel Plaza, exit 183 in Hasty, Minnesota, uh, just east of Clearwater. If you're coming past here, don't go buy your coffee at these more expensive truck stops. Come here to this truck stop, Yes. You saw the machines, exact same thing. They didn't tell me to say this. Nobody told me to say I'm just telling you out of the goodness of my own heart. If you like coffee as much as I do, this is just as good as anywhere else. Comes out of those same uh, bean to cut machines. And it's like just over a dollar for this. At other places, which shall not be named. <laughs> other places, sorry, excuse me. This would be like almost three, like $3. So, if you're on patch, stop here, get your coffee here. That's a tip from me. That one's free. Exit 183, I 94, Minnesota. Hasty, Minnesota. Speedway. Cheap coffee. All right, everybody, are you ready? Ready to uh, roll and rock? Let's just do one last check, a double check, like I always do. Spike the trailer. Just to make sure that my eyes weren't lying to me when I checked my fifth wheel, my trailer is indeed attached, attached and is not going to fall off. It's called the Hasty 183 Diner. They have uh, good food in there too. And there's always parking. I, I think anyway, I don't think I've Maybe once or twice I've had to leave because there's no parking when I got here if it's too late. But Let's get ourselves out there. We're going to be getting onto that highway right there, going on I-94 that way.
62 miles an hour. That's where I get my peak fuel economy and speed. If I do 65, my fuel economy goes down by at least half a gallon per mile. Sorry, up. Wait, you know what I mean. <laughs> it gets worse by half a gallon mile, miles per gallon. Why am I, why does it half a gallon per mile? Come on, Josh. It goes down by half a mile per gallon. I can English, I promise. Just arrived in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm gonna pull into the Flying J. Here, we're gonna buy 50 gallons so I can get a free shower. I'll go in and clean myself up, have a nice shower. And then we're gonna go and fill up our tanks all the way at Minot Flying J. This is closer to the border. That way I have 400 meters, turn right on, fuel when I get to Canada. Second Avenue South and then approaching destination on the right side in 40 meters. And I do that because fuel is more expensive in Canada. So I always fuel as late as possible in the US so that that cheaper fuel lasts longer for me in Canada. And hopefully if I get a load down to the States, it can get me back down here so that I can get back to the cheaper fuel prices and fuel here instead of having to fuel up there for more. So the minimum amount of fuel I have to buy to get a free shower is 50 gallons. That's why I'm buying 50 here. That should get me no problem up to Minot, North Dakota, where we'll top up. The, the price is pretty much exactly the same. I think it's a cent, a cent per gallon more expensive there. Which, if, uh, if you add it up, a cent per gallon is what it would work out to maybe a dollar more at the end, $1.50 at the most if I fuel up for 150 gallons there. But if I put it 50 here, I'm at a quarter tank now, I'm putting 50 now, I'll probably be filling up for about 100 more gallons or so once we get there, maybe a bit more. So that way, uh, man, because if I don't do that, if I fuel up here, by the time I get to the Canadian border, I'll already be almost at half a tank. I'll have to fuel up in Canada then. The fuel price and all the conversions and everything done here is approximately a dollar eight per liter. But if I go into Saskatchewan and fuel there, or even Manitoba where it's a bit cheaper, I'm paying at least like a dollar thirty to a dollar forty per liter, which adds up quite a bit. There's almost four liters in one U.S. gallon, three point seven eight five liters in one U.S. gallon. You got you can do the math. It's cheaper to buy it down here. All right, how do I look? Cut my hair. Not bad, right? Not bad for a truck driver. Okay, so uh, showered up, cleaned up, and uh, we're off. So I fueled up here for those 50 gallons, it's about 183 liters, and it gave me just over half a tank, but remember that's gonna settle down because I just put it into one tank, which is the side with the, the gauge. So that's gonna settle down. So it's probably about two thirds, or a third of a tank or something in there. That'll get us up to Minot, North Dakota, where we're gonna fuel up there. Pretty much the same price, like I was saying. Uh, and it'll last me longer. Hopefully then, if they do send me back into the US, that I'll have enough fuel to deliver in Canada, grab another load, and then get back to the cheap juice. If not, well, at least I tried, right? Always gotta try to save as much money as we can. Everything's expensive in this world, especially lately in the past couple of years. Mismanagement has got us into a terrible predicament with the cost of living, which hopefully we can fix in the next few years in Canada. Uh, looks like they're working on it in the U.S. We'll see what happens. Hopefully the future is bright, but right now we got to be a little bit uh, stingy with where we spend our money. If you got cheaper fuel, less tax, hey, guess what? You're going to get our business. Way too much tax up in Canada. Way too much tax. It just pushes all the business down south. But any hoodoo, let's go. we got a long way to go yet. We have about six hours of just driving just to get to the border. And then from there, a couple of hours to the customer. I can sleep right there overnight if I want to.
unload in the morning and I have a reload actually booked and scheduled from the exact same place that I'm delivering these tires to. So there is uh, zero empty miles. Isn't that awesome? It doesn't happen all the time. And we're bringing that to a town called Baggett, Manitoba. You heard that correctly, Baggett with a B. Theo was supposed to have his first haircut a couple of weeks ago, but it got canceled. Uh, there was an issue, uh, they were doing construction at the hair place, I guess, and no one told them that they would have to close down for the day. I don't know, it got canceled, whatever. It was suspicious, but we rescheduled, and that's this coming Saturday, so I'd like to be there for his first haircut. At 200 meters, turn right on, 32nd Avenue South. His hair is pretty wild. He definitely needs one. I don't think this guy is allowed on the interstate, but what do I know? Maybe I'm wrong. I believe there's a law about farm implements have to be off the internet. I don't know. What do you What do you guys know? North Dakota. I wouldn't be surprised if they are allowed because it's North Dakota. It doesn't bother me. I can go around them. Not like there's a lot of traffic. But does anybody uh, know? Not like anybody cares. I don't really care if he's on the highway. <laughs> that sun is right in my face. We're coming up to Jamestown, right here, North Dakota. I'm gonna turn, uh, go past the town, take the truck route around, take 218 up towards US 52, and we're gonna wind our way through the two lane roads up towards Saskatchewan, Saskabush. It'll be nice once we're going north and I won't have this sun right in my face. Sorry, I just told you I'm gonna take Highway 218. No, it's uh, 281 and US 52. Not 218, just clarifying that. Oops. Turn right on, 81st Avenue, US 281 truck. Here we are, US 281. This is the truck road that takes you around Jamestown. This is Carrington, North Dakota. We used to come through here regularly. Like I said, from Western Canada into the Midwest of the US, you always come through here. You got this gentleman off to our right here, just past this big neon sign, giving us a nice little friendly wave. Or a salute. I don't quite know, but I just know I'm not allowed to do that. I'm gonna go over this bridge here. And there's a truck stop on the other side. I'm gonna pull in there and start getting supper ready and put it in my little oven here, get it heated up so that we can stop in about an hour again and uh, have a nice hot supper. I think I'm going to be having mashed potatoes with some vegetables mixed in with it, mixed vegetables. And uh, what else? I think I'll make myself a sandwich. At the roundabout, take the third exit in 500 meters. There's the stop there. We've lost our sun already. The sunlight in the sky that's left will be gone in probably half an hour. So by the time we have our supper heating up, it'll be dark. Carrington, why do you put these roundabouts in? Everybody's doing, you know what? You keep putting these roundabouts in, I'm gonna start to like them. Then what are we gonna do? What am I gonna complain about when I like these things? Getting kind of used to them. I, I get their use. I get it. They're not all that bad. Continue on this road for 21 kilometers. No, we're going to turn left right here, Karen. Try to keep up. I just explained what we're doing. Casey's. Nice truck. Look at that Peter. It's a nice looking Peter. I'm gonna back in here right beside him. This pickup truck here is parking in the middle of the lot. I don't know what you're doing, bud.
here too long. Half hour tops, probably less than that, probably like 15 minutes. Just enough time to get my food mixed up and put together. Oh, I like those blue lights that he's got on those tanks there. Maybe I need to do something like that. That look pretty cool. I just don't know the legality of that because blue lights usually mean police, right? So I think it's illegal for him to run down the high. Oh yeah, he switched him to orange. Never mind. He's got color changing ones. I was just gonna say, I think it's illegal to run down the highway with blue marker lights. People might uh, mistake you for police then, right? But he switched them to orange over there. That's what I wanna do. I wanna get those color changing lights. All right, let's get some uh, supper heating up here. I've been doing pretty good with eating. Uh, mostly been uh, eating one meal a day still and breakfast some days. Uh, it's intermittent fasting. Still on my weight loss journey, but it's been working. I've lost over 30 pounds now. I'm down below 200, which was my goal. I was at 196 when I left on this trip. I want to get myself down to 180, see how I feel, and then I'm going to start adding more food into my diet. But I'm also being a lot more conscious of what kind of foods I'm eating and what I'm all putting into my body. And it's been working quite well. Uh, I'm going to have an inverter in my truck soon. I'm very excited about that. Uh, thanks to my friend Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, I really do appreciate that because now I'm going to be able to cook in my truck. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to have to build like shelving around here so I can have a microwave. Uh, I'm probably going to take out the passenger seat, move it over to the driver's side here because this seat has uh, got about over, well, over 2 million miles on it. This seat will go in the garbage. This passenger seat is still pretty much brand new because no one ever sits in it. I'm going to put that on the driver's side and with this open area here beside me, I'm going to build a, a, almost like a little cooking area, like a little countertop or something. Uh, with I'll probably put my cooler under there then as well. Uh, we'll see what I come up with, but i got to build shelving around the back as well. I want to make it look good as as well too so we'll see what we come up with uh, lots of plans for that in the future but I'm gonna be able to have like uh, a, maybe an air fryer in here uh, obviously cooking pots and pans I'm gonna be able to boil water have a rice cooker uh, what else like oh a microwave like I said maybe like a toaster oven obviously a toaster too so I can have toast that's gonna be good the only thing you gotta worry about when you do cross-border trucking like I do is that you can't take fresh fruit and fresh meats across the border. They don't like that. It's very inconvenient. I wish they would change that for truckers. I can understand why they don't want like massive amounts of fresh fruit moving back and forth. They wanna slow the spread of like, uh, like if there is something wrong with the fruit I have in Canada, they don't want that fruit to come into the US and threaten their food supply here. I, I, I get what they're doing. Uh, but I wish there was an exception for truckers because we need groceries in our trucks and it's too expensive to eat out all the time. It's ridiculously expensive to do that. So what I got to do now is I can't take it across the border. So I got to cross over into the U.S., stop at a Walmart or a supermarket of some kind, buy enough groceries, just enough from the U.S. side here, just enough for while I'm in here so that I can eat good food while I'm in the U.S. I have to eat it all before I go back because I can't take it back. And when I get back into Canada, I gotta stop at another supermarket grocery store, get more fresh fruits, vegetables, and stuff that I need for while I'm up there, and make sure I finish that before I cross back into the US again. So it's a little bit of a hassle. And I, I, I wish, you know, if I had the ear of someone in this new uh, administration coming in in the US, uh, the one thing I would say to them is make an exception for cross border truck drivers, like international drivers that go back and forth. Uh, for personal groceries that we're gonna eat. Like, as long as there's like, even if it's like a maximum amount that you can have, like a certain amount just to make sure that it's for, for personal use and stuff, that would be cool, though I don't know if that's possible because uh, uh, they are still worried about foodborne illnesses and stuff being moved across the border. But it, it would really help us if we could come to some kind of agreement between Canada and the US uh, to make it possible for us to have more healthy foods in our truck as we cross the border for our own personal consumption. We'll see, maybe one day, but probably not. Probably not, eh? uh, If they could eat, at least talk about it and consider it, that'd be nice. We'll see. Maybe uh, maybe that message will get through to uh, the right people, and maybe they can talk about it at least, and that would be nice. 
Okay, let's get some food ready here and let's continue down the road. Okay, so I've got some mashed potatoes with some mixed vegetables in there and uh, like a Mexican uh, rice burrito bowl or something that I found at Superstore last time I was there. I'm gonna give it a shot and warm it up along with the potatoes. Where's this guy coming? There's a guy coming from my left here. Where are you going, bud? You're probably coming in here. Am I in your way then? You're gonna go around me? Now you're going right past? Okay, well that's why I waited. In 100 meters, turn right on 3rd Street, US 52. Okay, so the next stop is Minot, North Dakota at Flying J. We're gonna fill up our tanks there. And then uh, after that, it's a straight shot up to Saskatchewan. to the customer where we'll sleep tonight and uh, we'll be there ready to be unloaded the crack of dawn tomorrow or actually before that because dawn comes later than usual I'm gonna let this guy go first you go ahead oh he's just gonna take it anyway I had the right away but I was gonna give it to you it's not so much a gift if you just take it Actually, that doesn't make sense. This road for 38 kilometers. That does not, after I, I, I heard what I said, that didn't make sense. It's not a gift if you take it. Well, what is it then? No, a gift is something you take. If you don't take it, it's not a gift, right? Whatever, he just, he took it too much. He took it too quickly, okay? I wanted it to be special. I don't know what I'm talking about. town is this that we're coming up to here this is Drake North Dakota it's been about an hour and a half already so my food is gonna be good and hot I'm gonna pull in here and have supper I think there's a truck stop coming up here on the right that's right yeah, yes I remember this truck stop I haven't been here in years last time I was here they had 50 cent cup of coffee it wasn't like Phenomenal to the moon coffee, but it was good, good coffee and 50 cents. I don't need a coffee right now, though, so that's a problem. Oh well, I'm gonna pull in here and uh, get some food in my stomach and then we'll continue to mine on. We haven't gotten there yet. Where's the driveway for this place? Is this it right here? No, there's another driveway yet, right? Here we go. Okay, so there's two trucks parked there already. I don't want to block that whole area off. I'm gonna go park over here. There we go. 200 meters, turn right on US 52. Oh, hush. I park right here, and there's a driveway right in front of me. I'm taking me right back out onto the road. Put us on off duty because we are having supper. There we go. Okay, so I'll show you what we got in here. And I just have this tiny little, um, you know, you can get them at truck stops. It's just a tiny little oven, but I use it to heat up my food right now. But like I was saying earlier, I really can't wait till I have a microwave and uh, the ability to have like uh, like a little, even a little electric stove element or something. Something I can just plug into the inverter. Or if I need to have a gas one, I don't want to use a gas, like even like a little propane one in here. But I can get those little electric ones, right? So you can put a pan on it and fry eggs or you can cook vegetables or whatever. That's going to be great. And I'm trying to get more into cooking and making meals. I've, I haven't really been very good at that through my life, but, uh, you know, I'm finding myself more and more interested in m meal preparation and making good food. So uh, I'm by no means an expert or anything, but since I have this new desire to learn, I may as well act on that, right? And start trying to be better. See what this looks like. Ooh, that looks good. That looks good. Come. 
Oh, come on. Look. Look. You guys ready? Oh, it smells so good. Oh, oh, sorry. I got it. Ah, the shadows are in the way there. Oh, can't get rid of that. There you go. So you got mashed potatoes with uh, mixed vegetables in there and a bit of a Mexican rice uh, burrito bowl in the, in the side there. It's all mixed together now, but that, that's totally fine. Mm. Something. I mean, it's better than what I what I used to do, right? Just eat truck stop food. That's, this will always be better than that. So I'm just going to mix this up. Oh, that's the perfect consistency, too. Those potatoes turned out just perfect. Nice. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, sit back now and watch my Tim Pool podcast. He's live right now. Uh, he's talking about the all the new nominations and stuff here in the States, so I like to keep up with that when I'm not working. Or I like to listen to it even when I'm driving. I usually turn the podcast on and then just listen as I'm driving. Uh, between, like, there's Tim Pool and uh, uh, Joe Rogan, Crowder. Uh, those are usually my go-tos to listen to. It uh, I like to listen to other people sometimes, too, but those those three I keep up with quite quite a bit. Hundred meters, turn left on 20th Street and then turn right in 40 meters. Well, I was gonna fuel it flying J, but I double checked it and Schatz here is three cents cheaper per gallon. So, guess who gets my business? Uh oh, is that. Oh, I gotta choose a different pump. This pump has a yellow thing on it. Alright, we gotta back out of here. There's that yellow uh, wrap on that passenger side pump satellite pump over there. You see that? my day not only does Schatz crossroad here have the cheapest juice turned out to be a dollar six per liter or uh, 287 us per gallon they also give the truckers free coffee i went in there ready to pay for it i had my wallet i was like no 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 man it's all right truckers get free coffee thank you very much that is this is actually not just because of this. Before this happened, this is one of my favorite places to stop. It's still more of the Ma and Pa type truck stops. And uh, it's right beside Blue Beacon. So you can get a truck wash and they got a nice paved parking lot here. Cheap fuel, free coffee for the truckers. And great staff. I've always had a good experience here. Trucker Josh, stamp of approval. Here we are at the end of our day. All my straps are taken off and I'm right 
in the unloading area so whenever they get here in the morning they don't even really need to wake me up right away they can wake me up by unloading I'm all ready for them so I can take those off I'll be up and waiting for them by the time they get here but unload my tires right here they go over there with those tires and then I believe these racks right over here are my reload I'm pretty sure probably just the two of them again it's not not a full load or anything it's just something to get me back home <laughs> 